Hello, my name is Dig Thomas. I'm the principal system engineer here at Dover Motion, and I'm here to talk about uh, one of our critical technologies, TOP, Trigger on Position. It's used for many applications, specifically to fire on a, uh, with a high accuracy or to read at a particular uh, position, again, with high accuracy. For many of these applications, people are using lasers to ablate things. Uh, or they are using cameras uh, with different technologies to uh, read images in. And in order to do this, they need some sort of signal to know exactly when to read this image or when to fire this laser. So typically when we think about performance of a stage, we often think about accuracy, repeatability, and often this accuracy is more of a long range type across the stage. Uh, you know, maybe in level of a micron or so. But there's also another type of accuracy that is sometimes overlooked. Uh, it's often referred to as subdivisional error. And it is a very small range local accuracy, which is related to the encoder, specifically optical feedback encoders. So here we have the uh, scale for an optical encoder. The typical makeup is a uh, graded track of reflective and non-reflective portions, uh, equally spaced. So we call this a single pitch. Typically those are from two to roughly 200 microns. For us and for many encoders, that's about a 20 micron pitch. So we'll kind of take that as rule of thumb. And if you try to read this using your encoder, you will read in the values you need, your position data, but you'll also read in garbage, noise, and inaccuracies. Uh, these inaccuracies are subdivisional error. Uh, they are contributed to from uh, inaccuracies on the scale, the electronics themselves, mismatch in resistors, mismatch uh, during electronics fabrications of ADCs, uh, alignments, all sorts of different things. We live in the 21st century. Electronics have gotten a lot better, a lot more consistent, partially in thanks to technologies like trigger on position, because we can now control lasers to uh, get electronics to very, very high precision. So the biggest component we really face now is something called cyclic error. And that pretty much dominates this local uh, inaccuracy that we deal with specifically uh, for uh, high resolution, high accuracy imaging. And as I've shown here, you see some sine waves uh, superimposed underneath this uh, single pitch. And here's a first order sine wave, second order, fourth order. And what happens in reality is you have many orders of these waves. They're slightly out of phase and they sum together to create something that looks like this. Um, for most applications, it's not really a big deal. But when you are trying to trigger something uh, with an accuracy of nanometers, this becomes a very, very big deal. So here at Dover Motion, uh, we have developed technologies to basically take this inaccuracy and squash it down to practically nothing. So on this slide, we have a uh, cyclic error versus stage position. This is measured using a high resolution laser interferometer that is triggered using uh, Dover Motion's hardware, uh, utilizing our top technology. And for every pulse that comes out, uh, the laser records the position. And this way we are able to measure the absolute inaccuracy of uh, the stage as a system. So here you can see the uh, three sigma is 39.1 nanometers. Um, overall, it's banded plus or minus 30 nanometers. By and large, that's not too bad, uh, especially compared to many off-the-shelf optical encoders. But for high-resolution imaging, such as TDI, uh, this doesn't quite cut it. So if you break it down into the uh, harmonic components, whereas on the previous slide I showed uh, single sine wave, double frequency sine wave. Those are represented here, whereas this is the uh, first order sine wave, this would be a third order, fourth order. And the amplitude to which they're contributing uh, to this inaccuracy. So for this particular plot, uh, 
you can really see the first order 20 micron is off the chart and it's causing most of this error. Uh, these two are also contributing, but this is really the problem. So this is what good looks like. This is a, another stage from Dover Motion where, again, we've taken a laser interferometer uh, triggered from our uh, hardware using top and measured the inaccuracy of the encoder, the cyclic error specifically. The three sigma on this one is about an order of magnitude less, 4.2 nanometers, and the banding I think is like five nanometers. Uh, but you can see the same green bars where from the previous slide, um, there's practically nothing. And if you look at the scale harmonics, all contributions are on the order of, you know, a couple of hundred picometers. You're talking about atomic level uh, noise. So this is phenomenal for uh, high resolution imaging, scanning, uh, smooth velocity. Another advantage is just in terms of power dissipation. The servo is not constantly trying to fight this error. It's actually going in a straight line because the encoder is telling to go in a straight line. So from the previous plots, the scales were slightly different than what you see right here. Uh, in fact, what we have on the left versus the right is a 15 to one scaling. So you can actually see the full error of the uncompensated um, encoder versus the minuscule error of the compensated encoder. And what I want to point out is that you, this 15 to one, that scale goes up to 15. This one goes up to one nanometer RMS. So looking at the scale on the left, you actually have about a peak at 12 nanometers RMS, and that's dominating your error. While the one on the right, the peak is 300-ish picometers, which is about radius of a, an aluminum atom. So pretty much nothing. And this basically goes to show that with our technology, we can squash the cyclic error into nothing. Dover Motion has developed these technologies uh, together to really make this trigger on position uh, a powerful and extremely useful technology. This is extremely important for TDI imaging, uh, especially due to the uh, short distance uh, required between triggers. When you think about cyclic error, the errors can't, will manifest themselves over hundreds of nanometers. And oftentimes in TDI imaging, that is the sample period between triggers. So if the cyclic error has any higher frequency components, uh, fourth order, it will definitely cause smearing within the image. It will uh, uh, require further signal processing. Um, and just overall degrades performance of the system.